do we need more content for casuals? Yoshi P thinking about making the game a bit less stress-free in his words. Yeah, there's there's definitely some a need for um, mid-core content. There's nothing, no like tutorial for anything else that would prepare you for extremes or unreal and definitely savage. Nothing. The expert roulettes, I, I just have a hard time calling them experts because you can get by just pressing one button. I wish that those dungeons would be way more challenging. You'd have mechanics you'd truly have to respect. What do you think about gearing? Why? What's the holdup? Like, let people gear up. Let people do what they want to do. So, and I, I do think the tombstones um, cap should definitely be unlocked. Alliance, the Alliance raid that comes out yep. after the tier, it should just drop Savage yep. equivalent. Listen, if you've ever watched week one raiders, anyone that you think is just an amazing raider, we struggle. Everyone messes up. Get over that fear. Begin to ask yourself questions. Why did you mess up? New pull, new you. It was a lot of burnout that happened. I, I think that just kind of got to me. And of course, I'm just going through the motions because I... I didn't want to let people down. Yeah. If you ever start to feel like maybe I'm playing too much 14, then you you need to take time for yourself, whether it's off stream playing, playing a game just for you. That's not 14 or just some time away. Maybe it's not video games at all, but you, you just there's got to be some kind of balance there. You know, welcome back to the weekly podcast. This is Unplugged and very special guest today, probably the number one Final Fantasy 14 rate coach. <laughs> I can say that because I'm a sprout in this game. Um, oh. And, you know, when I came to this game, you were probably the biggest help in terms of learning how to get better at the game. Mm -hmm. But I'll turn it over to you, Lama. Like, why don't you introduce yourself? Oh, sure. Um, I'm Lama Todd. Yeah, I've, I've done tons of Final Fantasy XIV raid content. Um, I'm, I am taking a break, though. I'll be back for Dawn Trail. So, like, there's lots of awesome games out there I've just been been dying to play. So, um, you know, we got FF7 Rebirth that's out, and it's I'm loving that. But uh, it's it's gonna take up a lot of time. There's so much to do in that, and plus we got a couple of other ones I'm I've been eyeing. For sure. Um, <laughs> and, and we'll get into it. You know. Oh, we will. Yeah, <laughs> but but I trust me. I I know that, that there's a new ultimate Eden, an Eden ultimate coming out, and uh, I've already got some friends that are want me to come play. I'm like, all right, I'm down. Let's go. Amazing. Got a raid. Um, and one of the mm -hmm. biggest. So the first thing I'll say is that when I first came to 14, and I, I will always remember you are actually one of the first few content creators in 14 to reach out and just to say hello and just mm -hmm. to let us Sprouts know that you are here for us. And I just want to say thank you because I, I've never done that formally. And, and I always remember oh. you until this very day. And I think the community kind of sees you as a real support pillar, you know, for us new Sprouts back then. Yeah. Yeah, I, I kind of had a reputation. I would, you know, because I, I was usually interested to see who's joining our community, like as like the Final Fantasy fourteen community, uh, and I was always interested in, in people who have a rating background were coming in, and I'd I'd like to hang out in their stream to see what they were about, and I'd I'd wait for that moment when they're done with the MSQ. I'm like Pro Prog, Prog, you want to raid? <laughs> <laughs> so that that kind of became a joke. I'd I'd always just ask people. Like, oh, there's Llama. He's going to ask him to prog or raid or something. I'm like, hey, I'm just, I like the MSQ. I just want to watch. I'm just here to chill. Don't worry about that. But but if if you do want to yeah, raid. Hit though, me up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, and, if you want to. But and many, many people would. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. No, that's a great segue, though. Like, because mm -hmm, I sure. think that, I, I don't say this lightly, because I've, I've seen a lot of your streams and I look on pretty much like most of your streams as well. Like, because mm -hmm. back then I was just trying to learn how to raid. And mm -hmm. I just see you going through this thing where it's almost as though you're just coaching people at how to raid and you're making calls on, you know, on, on your stream and whatnot. And it was it was just fascinating to see. And mm -hmm. I think you are that's really unique because there are content creators out there in, in Twitch in the 14 directory that kind of do raids, but they don't right. come from an educational kind of lens. And I want to pick your brains on that because as the number one kind of coach in this space of 14. Oh. Like, what motivates you? Like, what drives you to kind of oh. just help people like that? Well, I don't know if you can call me number one right now. There's so many people have stepped up, but I'm I'm delighted to see that. There's been a, a amazing uh, folks out there that have uh, been, like, there's like an ultimate project. So there's there's people doing all the stuff that I'm not. And uh, so I, I just want to give them all a shout out, like all the PF helpers out there. But I, I but yeah, I definitely did do my time uh, helping folks. And I, I think it, it was unique. Um at the height of it because you know, like you're saying we did have people um on twitch that would go into like party finder and help out but i think it was more unique 
with in terms of how I did it because I would I would actually bring people into Discord and not just like some randoms in a PF where like I'm just there to help and if we get a clear grade and then it might disband. But <laughs> I could spend several lockouts, even several days, um, with individuals helping them get better, like over time. It's like it's like, all right, like what are you and I I'd have this process of teaching them um, like mechanics. Then if I see them start getting comfortable, I start removing call outs and eventually I could just do like the first portion or first half of the fight or for a couple of phases without any call outs or maybe just a little reminder if I see them out of place. Um, and hopefully they would improve to the point where they could go into party finder on their own. That was my goal. I didn't want people to just get a clear for me and then go off into party finder with that clear and then not know what the heck they're doing. I wanted them to be confident to either like just join clear groups or even in turn help others, which I've seen actually a lot of people in my community turned around and um, became a helper or even like a raid leader. And uh, in fact, at FanFest, I've had several people that uh, shoot just people from years ago uh, from my very early helping days in like Stormblood uh, say that like they are leading a world first team or they're wow. they're they're like these this is huge I mean, well, much much better than where I'm at I'm like that's awesome and they're like well you got me my start llama because you helped me in um in a delta escape or our alpha escape or something I'm like oh oh wow that's that's flattering so I, I loved hearing all the stories from people at FanFest coming yeah, up to me yeah I and I think that's the crazy part because it's it, it probably took maybe two days, three days of your time, and you set them on this path to also help others, which is, if you think about the impact you have mm -hmm. made in the past like few years, that's kind of insane. And I think you're not yeah. giving yourself a lot of credit by just being so humble, but um, <laughs> just, just saying as a sprout, like your content was 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 really great. Um, and, and since you've helped well, so you. many people get clears and you've taught them you know, how to be independent in terms of like joining PF, leading their own static, Mm -hmm. What advice would you give like for people out there who haven't started raiding, but they're curious about raiding in 14, like, and, and you've helped so many, right? So what kind of advice would you give someone that's starting out? Where do we start? Uh, that's a great question. It's, uh, it's one I get a lot. Um, and I think the, the biggest deterrent for people getting into raids is a fear of failure, a uh, fear, fear of wiping, and they don't want to, they don't want to be the bad guy. They don't want to be the problem. Um, and they don't want to let people down. I'm like, well, I try to remind them. I'm like, listen, if you've ever watched week one raiders, anyone that you think is just an amazing raider, we struggle. Everyone struggles. Everyone wipes. Everyone messes up. We don't just go in there and one shot everything. Like it's, it's a process. I'm like, you just have to get over that fear of messing up and begin to ask yourself questions like, well, why did you mess up? Do you know the answer to that question? And if not, then you either ask your raid leader. And if like if it's at a coaching party with me, definitely ask me. Um, but if you do know how you messed up, and it's like, all right, just get over it. New pool, new you. And I try to <laughs> impress that upon people. I'm like, forget about it. If you know, if you know why you messed up, we'll just keep moving on. It's all right. Um, it's and it's really just. It's, yeah, that's really just it. Just getting over that that initial fear yeah. of um, letting people down. And I feel like you're creating such a supportive environment where you tell them like, okay, mm. new pool, new you. And I think a lot of people struggle to get to the point where they find that conducive environment or the static that they enjoy playing with. Mm. How, right. how do new players go about finding like that fit, you know, the right static for them? Um, well, a couple of things. Um, I'd say first, set your expectations. Um, what kind of group do you want? Are you, do you think you're ready for like world prog or week one? Or like, are you going to go pretty hard with rating or are you going to do casual? And you need to find people like well, that are going to be on the same page as you. Because if you have a mixed group where you have people that are like, trying really hard and then you have some people that are just like there for fun um you're gonna definitely have some resentment and people just button heads and it's probably not gonna be a good time someone's going to lash out so make sure that you're you're going you're you're finding the right group for you and what you want 
and your play style and then just go from there. Like it for me, I mean, I I started off. I, di- I didn't do like week one until past maybe a couple of tiers. Like I I was more or less casual to maybe at most mid core uh, for several tiers. And I was I did coaching uh, like after I got my clear, it was like weeks Weeks and weeks later, I was like week eight sometimes. Um, and in fact, it was it was actually Omega um, final Omega. That was the first year I cleared on content. And so <laughs> um, it's just I'd say take your time with it and just, again, set expectations. Um, and then if you where you find people, well, um, I know that there's a subreddit for Final Fantasy for recruitment. I would search there. There's um, a couple of discords. I think you could probably find most of them through um, the balance discord. That's the most, probably the most popular one. You could, if you can't find it on there, at least you'll find other uh, discords through that. And then um, social media, and then maybe even uh, Twitch communities. Um, So you have different avenues to to find groups. Um, Otherwise, if you don't do any of those, Find people in game that you're raiding with, like just randoms. And if you got along with them, you add them to a cross world link shell. And it's like, you know what? That guy was pretty cool. And you keep adding people like that over time. And you might have a partial static of just some friends in game. That's good advice. Um, Mm -hmm. And and you mentioned earlier that it's only in recent times you kind of started challenging yourself to do week one Mm -hmm. kind of clears. Kind of, you know, tell us like, how's that transition like going from um, I, I guess in your words, like more mid-core, going to something like week one, you know, clears, like how's that mentality different? And yeah, oh. what, how's it like? Yeah. Well, um, I think before it's just, I didn't have the time. I was working a full-time job. So just the time commitment alone was not feasible because for week one, you you have to take off that whole week. And that's why many groups fall apart if they don't clear week one because they're out of their their paid time off. And they're like, well, that's all, that's all I had. So like, if we don't clear in this week, then that's yeah, it. I got to put bread on the table, you know? <laughs> yeah, they, people got to go back to work or back to school or whatever it is. Um, so yeah, for, for a while, it was just, I just didn't have the time for it. And I thought it was cool. Uh, and then when I kind of doing, or I started becoming a, well, yeah, when I made the decision to become a full-time content creator, and I was like, okay, well, now it makes more sense for me to try for week one and um, really go for it. And you you do have to commit. It's like it's 12 to 16 hours a day um, until you clear Oof, intense. for Savage. And yeah, and it's <laughs> <laughs> with, with a few breaks in between and you're up in the morning and you go until the evening and you get your, you got your, your snacks, your trail mix or prog stew or chili or whatever it is you prepared for the week. Um, <laughs> and and right. you're just, you're going to be a little gremlin in your, in your room for a while. Um, right. And, um, and, you know, you mentioned the transition to being a full-time streamer. Let's, let's kind of yeah. talk a bit about that. Cause I think, you know, um, 14 as a, as a, as a game, like when you first started playing it, did you ever fathom that, you know, you would be a full-time streamer just based off this game. And and actually, I know you've been doing some variety stuff. We'll talk about that. Mm-hmm. But like, how, sure. talk to me about that, like that feeling of being a, a, a full-time content creator starting from the 14 directory. It was a hobby. It was just something I wanted to try. Um, I would just do a few hours a, a night. Um, not every night, just like when I'd play. It was basically only when I did the coaching parties, uh, when I streamed a little bit. I didn't even have a camera at the time. Um, and people responded to that pretty well. And eventually I gained like a small reputation, I'd say, and it kind of word got around that I was like a a good guy and and party finder. And I ended up making some friends that wanted me in a, an ultimate prog group. Um, it was, it's actually called the fickle pickles. It was the group that. I was with uh, Xenosis Vex, actually, and my, my buddy Zesh and Galaxy and Fenra and those guys. And and that was his his second group, I think, um, another prog party. But it was still on content uh, doing tea. And I think from there, um, I, and I, I still 
a lot of thanks to to Zeno here, but it definitely helped uh, put me in the spot a little bit, just being um, in Zeno streaming in his group. And uh, people started to tune in to me a little bit more after that fact. And I was like, okay, let's let's go check out what Llama's doing. If he's doing like some party finder stuff, like, okay, great. Let me, I'll join his group. And it, um, I think it, it really took off from there. Absolutely. Um, and it was at that point um, when I started to see an uptick where I was like, you know what? Maybe I can turn this into full time because right before... Right before that, that T prog was, uh, I actually uh, just lost my job and it was right at the start of COVID. So everything was just kind of shut down. So I, I was out of work and you couldn't really do anything for work. And I was, I was studying to like get some certifications and then streaming. Cause I was like, well, this is all I got right now. Like I'll try to make some money on Twitch, whatever, uh, while I'm preparing for this stuff. And then this started to like increase in popularity. I'm like, okay, well, what if I really apply to my apply myself to content creation on Twitch? I had to talk with the missus, you know, she's the boss. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yep, I, I and she was she's very supportive. She's like, all right, well, like, let's try this for six months and see how it goes. And if not, then we'll kind of go back to our first plan. But uh, it, fortunately it, it had it had definitely worked out. Um and Great I think story. this was a perfect perfect timing uh for Final Fantasy fourteen because uh during COVID, it was, it's it's probably insane. it was it was popping off. I like I like to get crazy. your thoughts on that. And I asked Arthur mm-hmm. the same thing because you folks are veterans of of fourteen. And mm-hmm. did you ever foresee this game exploding in in the way it it could be like in that summer? Mm. It's just insane. But how does this no. how does it feel as a veteran? Um, it was amazing. I <laughs> it was the perfect storm, and many people like to probably describe it that way. It was the perfect storm of events because typically um, during that time in a patch cycle, it's like between like the last raid tier after the last raid tier, and then the another expansion coming up. This like dead space. That's when people that may they might be doing like you know log runs or they're not playing the game. They're they're doing other things. They're just waiting for. The next expansions but we had something special because we had the wow exodus mm. right at that time so now we had this influx of all these other players and we had asmin gold and, and when when he kind of green lighted it or like all these other people were like oh hey well if asmin's checking it out maybe i'll check it out and then you know wow was maybe not in the best state then so it was it was amazing. And, and yeah, I actually, I made a lot of friends. Um, a lot of the wow content creators, uh, I actually met a lot of them at BlizzCon. So I went to, I went to several conventions this year, I went to fan fest, two fan fest and BlizzCon. Uh, and I got to meet a ton of folks and some of them that I got to either, uh, I've, I've rated with, um, did coaching parties with or collabs with, or I just at least spoke with, um, you know, between like Final Fantasy and WoW. So it was it was really cool to meet them. Yeah, let's um, talk about that. Like, so, yeah. you know, you're probably one of the most wholesome people at the directory. Like, I'm sure meeting your fans, your fans meeting you in person, that, that's a great experience yeah. for you. And, you know, during COVID, mm-hmm. we, we didn't have any of these physical meetups. How no, was that like for you? No. Going back to, you know, physical events like that? Um, <laughs> well, since I like barely leave my house, it was <laughs> something I had to like prepare myself for socially. But I can... You know, I even though I'm like pretty introverted, I can I know when to be present and more extroverted and just like engaged and stuff. And you're you're kind of still on as you are as a streamer, like when you're streaming, when you're at one of these conventions, you're not there to really relax. Like you're you're just that's you. It's like you're kind of you're still presenting yourself as a streamer. Like, But I'm. I don't really have a persona. Like I'm, I'm pretty much like the same like, as you meet me in real life. That's just how I am in, on stream too. Uh, maybe I talk a little bit like lower or something because <laughs> you know you have to, you have to project there, yeah. right? You have to enunciate and project. But, um, but it was so cool meeting, meeting different people. And um, uh, like I said before, just, just all the different stories from, from folks, um, from the past a couple of years where uh, where they're like, you know, you help me and, and they tell me which fight. Um, and then they tell me what they're doing now. And some of them had 
like little gifts for me. Like wow. someone made like some some custom stickers, uh, of, like a little like guy in a llama suit, like with the ninja doing like the ninja sign really and stuff. Cool. Yeah, they wouldn't let me know who their name was. Like, I was like, "Who are you?" I want to thank you. They're like, "No, no," and they just left. I'm like, "What? No picture? Like, they didn't want anything. They just wanted to hand me that." And I was like, "Um," and I, I just t- really taken aback at um, all the kindness um, and just it's all the love. It was it was pretty emotional, man. I even had um, this was wild, but I I had like an, an impromptu line form amazing um on the on the second day because there was like this Twitch streamer meetup thing uh, at one of the days. It was in the lobby, so if you d- even if you didn't have a ticket to get in, you could still meet mm. the streamers in the lobby, which is open to the public. That's which a great idea. And I went there because I wanted to meet like <laughs> Whoops and Draconis and, and a few others, right? Yeah. Um. So I was like, oh hey, and I'm just kind of standing next to them, and then all of a sudden, right? How did the light form for you? So you're just talking to the, people, and then like a light form. I was talking to Whoops, who had of course a big line, right? And then to my left, it was someone lined up to see me and then it just started going from there and it was and then i was like oh and i was there for a few hours and i didn't get to go inside the convention that day not complaining like i didn't i actually didn't do hardly anything at the convention other than just talk to people i didn't do any of the things that they had set up like if like for like any doing any of the the trials or the little games and stuff that they had i maybe did one thing but other than that it was just it was just talking to people and meeting everyone uh, and staying hydrated because I was doing a lot of talking. That's that's a great story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a great story. Was, um, also, it was so cool. Also, testament to the impact you made on this community. Um, speaking about you know the impact of on 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 the game and whatnot, like you know we're looking mm-hmm. forward to Don Trail, right? I think that's what a lot of content creators are, are talking about. Um, what are your hopes for the expansion? Because I think there's a lot of discussion in recent weeks about. Do we need more content for casuals? You know, Yoshi P thinking about making the game oh, yeah. a bit less stress-free in his words. Um, but yeah, like, I, and I saw the video you put out, great video, by the way, but you know, on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. and, and by the way, for people oh, who haven't you. checked out your YouTube channel, they really showed lots of gems there. Um, but yeah, kind of kind of talk to me about that. Like, how do you feel as oh. a veteran? Oh, I'm working I'm working on that YouTube. I'm working on that YouTube, but um it's it's funny you mentioned that. I'm actually working on a, a big video it's my wish list for don trail amazing it's it's yeah um i'm taking a break from that right now just so we can have this talk but um <laughs> yeah there's there's definitely some a need for um mid-core content i i, I agree 100 percent there um i think kind of going back to one of our other uh, the question you had about how to get in a rating i think another answer to that would be to have mid-core content as like a stepping stone mm-hmm. to go from the n- <clears throat> the normal content to savage now we have extremes we have unreals but i think we need we need more of them and i think we need different degrees of difficulty surrounding that segment of uh, of trials and raids um i've i always thought that a mythic plus it's like type dungeon system would be amazing for final fantasy 14 where it would start off normal and then progress all the way through like you know eventually you get to like extreme level and then maybe savage level so people could learn over time like maybe how to improve um i i i also think and this is what i talked about in my my last video was just like I was just spitballing like well if Yoshi P says and maybe he didn't mean it this way which I've I've been told but how to make things stressful or how to make it harder I'm like okay well let's just think of ideas what would make the game harder or more challenging and I think that uh, one of the biggest things in in the game is that you you don't really get taught your your whole kit your your role um and losing all of your cooldowns defensive cooldowns it's just kind of left up in the air we have uh, a hall of the novice very early on in the game that people probably skip over but there's nothing no like tutorial for anything else that would prepare you for things like extremes or unreal and definitely savage Mm -hmm. nothing um so i think with story content like dungeons and trials and raids or not raids since it's optional um 
but I think they could work in stuff where it would challenge people a bit more. It doesn't have to be super difficult. Like, it doesn't have to be savage level, extreme level, nothing like that. But I do feel like it should at least test your knowledge of, do you know your rotation or an AOE rotation? Mm -hmm. Do you know how to do a tank swap? Do you know how to provoke and shirk or use Asuna and rescue? And, like, all these things that you, you see people just not ever use or sometimes it's not even on their their hot bar. Yeah. So I think just having content that challenges people enough to learn their job might give them the confidence to do harder content. And then if you have a progression system like a Mythic Plus dungeon system, um, then maybe, maybe it'll encourage people to, to go and test themselves even more. This is a great point because I remember playing this game and, and you're right, Hall is a novice um, and then fast forward and, and that's really early on and I feel like, you know, as you go into the later expansions, you get new abilities and whatnot, like, you know, that was kind of irrelevant and experience as a mm -hmm. tutorial um, and the only way you kind of learn how to play your job, right, was really external resources like you go to YouTube or you, you yeah. guides and, and it's quite Nothing puzzling. in the game. Yeah, it's quite People puzzling that, yeah, we have to rely on a Discord, like a, the balance to, to kind of learn your job and I, I i do think that there needs to be a way to ease people, people don't know yeah it, and especially from a lot of the people that came from wow they had to learn what like a buff window or two minute window was or an opener because i mean heck even in wow you would just you know you you pop your trinkets and potions or whatever then you just start going like you just hit whatever you need to but in 14 it's like you you kind of have a more of a rigid structure and like what you need to hit at the start of the fight and then every two minutes and then like your big reopener later on in the fights it's and some people they don't even know that they're like what's an opener like oh well you pretty much hit all of your buttons <laughs> in this tiny window and then you do it again every two minutes or so and and people don't know that. you're not taught that there's nothing in the game that says oh well here's your opener we we kind of have something the stone sky sea where it is a time attack it's like well if you can't destroy this this target dummy in a certain amount of time then you you failed but it doesn't really do anything other than just well give you something to hit but it doesn't teach you like how to hit your buttons mm. And so there's, there is no, yeah, there's no guide for like rotation or anything. You mentioned, you know, something like a scaling kind of content or something like a Mythic Plus. Like, we'd love to get your thoughts. Like, Varian Criterion Dungeons, like the, I guess like there are levels of difficulty there, but you know, mm -hmm. what do you think of the system? Like, does that thing have legs and, and what would you change? Um, I would, I would definitely like to see that um, expanded upon. Um, I, I think people don't do it enough because the rewards are bad. So maybe just incentivize it a bit more. And I think <laughs> for some people, the, the whole savage version of it is just awful because it's, it's basically you're almost progging an ultimate at that mm -hmm. point. Cause it's, it's, if you wipe, you got to go back to the start and there's no, there's no reses. You can't really recover. So, I mean, it's, it is challenging. It's, it is, it is fun, but there's, there's really no need to do it again and like kind of punish yourself. Right. Um, but I, th yeah, I think just better rewards and more of those dungeons and maybe different levels of difficulty. Uh, and maybe, maybe like add some flair to it. Um, they, they kind of have some cool options where it's like, Oh, you can, you can have these, these special abilities. Well, maybe, maybe they can just, they can have like, I don't know, different gear that could be applied only in that dungeon or like with set bonuses or, or trinkets. I don't think trinkets right. would work in 14, <laughs> but it'd be kind of cool to use something where it's like, Oh, well, let me try this. Um, and I, I also think that, um, making like the expert roulettes i i just have a hard time calling them experts because you can get by just pressing one button or honestly just following someone and often there's people that are just doing the heavy lifting yeah. uh for the group because someone's just not pulling their weight uh i i wish that those dungeons would be way more challenging you'd have mechanics you truly have to respect because you're never in danger mm. there's very few, if any, like 
one hit KO right. mechanics, right? Or you have to use a knockback or there's a few few instances where you have to use a Suna, but the groups I've gone in with, um, they'll just let you fall over dead. Right. Because they're not using a Suna. <laughs> <laughs> so so maybe I, I think what I like about WoW and some of the harder dungeons is you you have to or maybe at least in the past, um, where you had to CC or use crowd control yeah. on on mobs and stuff and we we have this um w- the way things work in 14 with those dungeons is people just trying to plow through they do a wall to wall pull mm-hmm. use all your c- defensive cooldowns unless the tank just doesn't use any cooldowns right. then the healer's using all of theirs <laughs> and then kill the boss with like no cooldowns right. because they're easy um and then you just repeat that process so so maybe you do something how Variant does it, where the tr- the trash is actually very challenging. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah. Like give them like give you something to worry about. Like, oh, I can't take these. I can't just like pull all of this stuff. We'll just right. they'll murder us and we'll annihilate us. And then give the bosses some some sharper teeth, right? <laughs> so like the tank busters actually threaten to kill the tank, right? Because the tank busters in a dungeon, an expert dungeon, they do you. They're laughable. Yeah. You don't even have to use reprisal. You, don't, you barely have to use any mitigation. You might have to use your personal, maybe, if your healer's asleep. I'm actually but, uh, I would, 100% you know. on board with you like, about the harder content in dungeon stuff. Um, I feel like it does teach people to kind of, like like you said, respect mechanics, use your toolkit a bit better. Um, yeah. You know, and obviously, I had this conversation with a lot of people before, and one of the biggest, I guess, counter-argument is that, hey, but a lot of these dungeons, they're tied to the story. So... What do you think the solve mm. is? Do we need more optional dungeons? Like, how, what do you think about that? Well, we used to have the the hard mode dungeons. So, so maybe after, if you really want to make people happy, um, just keep the story dungeons the same and then have an optional hard mode. But if it were up to me, I would just I would just put it in the story mode dungeons. Just right. I, I think people need to respect mechanics a little bit more it doesn't have to be harder like they're not gonna like fail outright but they'll think twice about standing in an aoe Mm. or not pressing a defensive cooldown because it's something that they should do but that's interesting that that. that could that could be for some people that's asking too much I've I've dealt with people there's there's some of these toxic casuals where (laughs) you see them not pressing buttons and you know that it's wrong and you're in that dungeon, you're just like, and should I say something? Yeah, I and know you, that feeling because mm-hmm. people would just say, well, you don't pay my sub, you know, like that's always the, they, the go-to. They do, they, they say that, and or they just say, no thanks, and then like, okay, all right. I try. Because yeah. it's it's worked for them once, they don't have to change, it's mm. the way they play. I'm like, I'm like, all right. That's a very interesting point you brought up because I think like it's the parallel to what Yoshipi was saying in his recent interview, right? Like a side scrolling game, if you don't have things to punish you, like for example, falling through the ground into a hole, then it it takes it also takes away fun in mm-hmm. some sense because there's no stakes. There's no like you said, there's no right. one shot mechanic. Yeah. So I I can totally see like the, the rationale behind that. Um that makes a lot of sense. I kind of want to pick your brains on something else that's also, you know, been talked a lot about for Dawn Trail, like what I think Raiders and whatnot are also hoping that uh, could be revisited. And that's like the two minute buff window. Like mm. a lot has been mm-hmm. spoken about the homogenization of like jobs. Yeah. You know, give us some historical context. Like in the past, is there like, you know, very distinct kind of play styles, roles, you know, DPS profiles for, for jobs? And, oh, and how do you yeah. feel about this whole like, trying to standardize every single job thing. Well, I mean, I, I guess I've always enjoyed the two minute meta because I was, I main ninja. So it got <laughs> me into groups. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's, there's always been jobs where you, it was like, well, they bring damage. They don't really bring utility. Mm. Um, so it would, maybe it was a deciding factor of like how many you bring, like maybe you can't bring a, a bunch of samurais. You'd have to bring, a ninja you have to bring a dancer or a red mage or something and you'd have to like stack all these these certain um buffs or maybe it might be the case where you you don't bring uh, a white mage or and you, you bring an astro you get like your divination you get your cards um yeah and, and that was i guess that was more for optimization and, and log runs and stuff but i guess sometimes if the, if the t- fight was like really tough it might be 
the like the reason why someone gets dropped from a group or at least they'd have to be able to learn multiple jobs within their within their role mm. which is something i had to do because like even even like at times ninja was just like trash so i was i had to like learn monk or something just in case right just in case yeah i, I didn't want to trust me i did not want to learn monk but uh it was there were times where um the highest damage ninja would be about the same level as like a mid-range monk right like kind of kind of half-assing it so it's like oh my god like please fix this that's um, um that's a good point mm-hmm. i think a lot has been said mm-hmm. about like job balancing and um right you know i think the hope is hopefully in Dontre we'll see something that is a bit more i guess you know like a better word, balanced um but i also kind of want to pick your brains on something related to that um earlier you mentioned sure. you know for from a gearing perspective like potentially like you know something not saying that they should do tier sets, but something, you know, fun like that could be interesting. Um, yeah. What do you think about gearing? You know, a lot of people talked about like uh, the tombstone caps and whatnot. And, Ooh, yeah. I have a lot of opinions about gearing. <laughs> um, yeah, I asked Yoshi P at FanFest um, about the, well, I asked him, we, we set it up so Zeno could ask him one question, Arthur's could ask another, and then I followed up with another. So like, we, we were like, all right, we talked about it. Like, all right, we'll ask these things about about gearing and it was like I, I forget who asked i think maybe Zeno asked about the tombstone thing but i asked about unlocking the raid tier sooner because mm. it takes you it takes them eight or nine months to unlock a raid tier it just got unlocked yeah this the last raid which has been out for uh, yeah about eight months just got unlocked i'm like this is ridiculous yeah like why what's the hold up like let people gear up let people do what they want to do and, and and gear up multiple jobs uh so they can go back into party finder and help folks. Like it shouldn't, you shouldn't have that loot restriction mm. for that long. Cause it's, it's terrible when, especially like from my perspective, when you, you want to go in and help folks and it's like, well, I'm, I'm, <laughs> we're going to remove loot. Yep. Just because, because you're helping, yeah. I've, cause I've cleared yeah. for the week and I, I'm going back in on this character and I've, I've run out of alts and in a game like final fantasy, where they encourage you to play on, one character because you can play all the jobs it's like well why do i have to make another alt right it's like well it's because of the because of the loot restrictions and they don't unlock the tier sooner so and i I do think the tombstones um cap should definitely be unlocked and i think personally i think it should be minimum three months yeah yeah max i'm sorry maximum three months after the the raid tier comes out i honestly think it should be like eight weeks yeah maybe eight weeks just because by then I think all the top groups have cleared and have it on farm. And even some of the mid core groups have cleared. So it's like at that point, like just let people, yeah. let people have fun with it. Like just unlock it. Like who, like who cares? And, and then the other point is that if there's an ultimate coming up uh, and it's still mm-hmm. restricted and uh, yeah, you gotta depending on them, the, yeah. depending on the job system, um, you're going to be locked to one job mm. because you can't you can't gear up another one fast enough, especially one that has uh, <laughs> a ton of gear that you have to buy with tombstones because it's going to be weeks before you're able to purchase it. Purchase everything for two jobs, right. definitely not three, and upgrade and get the upgrade items for them. Yeah, it's tombstone and you have to upgrade them. It's not it's not just this is best inside. It's a, it's that's a two two part system mm. there. Oh, I think those are great um, points about like letting people play how they want to play. Uh-huh. Um, and, and you know, I think the irony here is that maybe some of the systems that were originally in play was really kind of meant to ensure like, you know, people don't get too fast ahead of the content. And like, I, I don't know, like well, I feel like part of it is like pacing people, but I see your yeah. point. Yeah. Um, I, but I also think we should have um, a few more ways to get savage Mm. eye level gear right uh i've i've always felt that alliance the alliance raid that comes out after the tier that should be the same it should just drop savage equivalent because you only get get you can only get one piece anyway right Right. and it would encourage people to run it more instead of just for the coin right now you can get a savage piece 
and a coin. I'm like, well, shoot, let me, let me do that. Cause yeah. it's just glamor. It's really just glamor that you're getting. Um, I, I think the criterion gear, there should be criterion gear. Yeah. And I actually love the vault system in wow. I, I think if you want to encourage people to do different, mm. um, content in the game where they like PVP or crafting or raiding, give them a vault system. And it's like, all right, well do these things. You can get some of these pieces over here. And if you do some of the harder content, then you'll get equivalent, equivalent gear for your efforts. Right. And, and lots of great suggestions. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, you've been a veteran, you've seen lots of expansion launch. Um, oh, I'm yeah. going to put you on a spot here, which is what do you like? Do you think, Realistically, like there will be changes come Don Trio about the things we spoke, be gearing, job balancing, you know. Yeah. What's your thoughts? <laughs> if anything, they, there's definitely going to be some, I don't know, well, they're going to be do, some, doing some job balancing, but it might not be what we want. Mm. But because, you know, it's going to be a new level cap. So it has to happen anyway. And right. we'll probably have the media tour soon. So we'll get to find out what the job's going to be about. Um, but we were told very politely no for like the mm. things like tombstone and unlocking the raid tier. So I don't think that's going to happen. And I realistically, I don't think they'd ever have um, savage eye level gear in anything else other than savage mm. and upgraded tombstones. Right. And, Sp yeah. yeah. Speaking about changes though, um, you know, we'd love to kind of talk about, you know, you've been exploring variety gaming and, you know, I've been, I've been looking at your streams and whatnot. Um, oh, and, and, you know, <laughs> tell me, tell me about that. Like, uh, you know, how did you get into, you know, playing other games other than 14? And I know for the longest time you only played 14. I, I don't know how you do it by the way, cause I feel like, yeah, you, I always see you playing 14. Like what made you kind of want to try to do different things? Oh man, it was, I think it was just a, a lot of things that kind of got me to that decision. It was, it was a lot of burnout that happened and, um, we had a, it was a, it was a tough, it was a tough expansion, uh, mm. raid wise. It was, you had, we had some pretty difficult tiers and two ultimates that followed each one and both were the two hardest ultimates you'll have in the game. Right. Um, and the top prog would just, it just went on and on and on. And we, we kept losing people right. and it kept delaying prog. And it's just, it's just like dragging more and more. And I, I think that just kind of got to me. And of course, mm. um, since I had a health score before, um, I, I finished top, um, or actually, actually before I even started progging it, I, I kind of reassessed mm. like my decision to commit that much time into both streaming and rating because I was doing some insane hours for you. Yeah. Very, yeah. Very unhealthy hours. The doctor said it wasn't like, uh, <laughs> that was really my fault or anything. Right. It wasn't anything I was doing. It was just like this fluke right. situation, but, but, um, I don't think it helped, but uh, so I just, I reduced my hours and I wanted to do things that would make me happier. Mm. And for for a time, and I'm sure there's plenty of uh, streamers now in the 14 directory that just yeah they love 14, and that's all they're gonna do. And I I applaud them, and I please keep helping people like do that. But mm. if you ever start to feel like maybe I'm playing too much 14, then you you need to take time for yourself. Yeah. Whether it's off stream playing playing a game just for you that's not fourteen, or just some time away, maybe it's not video games at all, but you, you just there's got to be some kind of balance there, mm. um, just for your own physical and mental state. Right, and you've done it to great success. Like you know, I remember seeing um, Asmon go reacting to a clip of your oh. you know your wild classic stuff. Um, yeah, and you know I'm really happy for you, honestly, because um, I mm -hmm. I also sense the way. Um, you are on stream, like your vibes are different and and it comes through in, in the stream and you, you seem, you know, pretty much more well-rounded and, you're, and you're, you know, your spirits are better. Um, yeah, kind, kind, it does. Yeah, tell us more, I, like, tell us more about, you know. Sure. No, yeah. I, I knew, I knew it was like reflecting on my streams, my four, my Final Fantasy 14 streams. I, I knew, I was very aware. I'm like, man, I'm not, 
I'm not putting on a good show. Like I'm not like my audience knows that I'm miserable. Like I I'm just going through the motions because I, I didn't want to let people down. Yeah. I, I had several prog groups. Um, I was helping some folks work a couple of collabs, um, that I, I didn't want to leave, but mm-hmm. I had to make the hard decision. I'm like, guys, like I'm unhappy. Yeah. Like I, I got to step down and I, I got to quit all my groups. Mm-hmm. I thought I could do keep one group, but at that point I was like, no, I, I can't do it. Can we play something else? And, um, and fortunately it was, uh, one of my friends actually, uh, Potastic P Genie, yeah. she's super sweet. Um, so we play Baldur's Gate, um, oh, almost, cool. almost once a week. We played Baldur's Gate three once a week, just about. And, and now we're playing like a few other games, but, um, but we, I, I was helping her through the raid tier and I, I felt super bad for like, I was like, I feel so bad for like leaving the group or I don't, like, don't want to leave you yeah. hanging. It's like, well, let's just play something else. I'm like, yes. Okay, cool. And, and uh, you mentioned that like, ahead. um, it's a mixture of things and, I, I just want to say for the record, I think, um, you know, obviously I had a I had a near death incident as well, and it's a traffic mm. incident. But it also taught me that yeah, you got to prioritize yourself. Um, mm-hmm. And and life is is kind of short, you know. Um, oh yeah. And and there was definitely parts of me where I felt like yeah, I, I gotta live up to what the community expects of me. Maybe to keep playing fourteen every single day, right. day out and you eventually realize that look, my personal happiness is the most important. And you are absolutely right. I think people could sense when you are not on your top form on stream when you're not happy. And I think it's just for the betterment of the community as well to have you, you know, back in top shape for, for Don Trail, take the break. Yes. You need. And I think be, the majority of people will understand that. So that's exactly right. And I mean, it, it is scary as a content creator when you, when you're like a one game Andy and you've played that and you've had all your success in that one, one game, you're like, well, maybe I'll just not do that. <laughs> so there's, there's definitely been some challenges going from one game to variety. Um, but I, I think it's while challenging, I, I think it's necessary. And I, I think it's a great way to grow as a streamer. Yeah. And, and because of that, I, I did find myself in a situation where I got to play hardcore. Wow in only fangs and and it was actually through uh jay the bard who mm. i had helped um do raid prog with so it's there again like through my connections and how helpful i've been in 14 it's because of that I, it opened up opportunities elsewhere and so he's like we got to get llama in and uh, now i've i've made friends i've kept uh kept up with uh, yeah. several of the, the folks in only fangs um, to this day, even though even though that's that has stopped, sadly, I I, I hate that it stopped, but uh, I think it was time well spent. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> like that, you were rubbing shoulders with you know the biggest wow content creators, oh, and oh yeah, and I, I was felt like, so out of place. I was happy. No, no, I, yeah. I was really happy for you, dude. Like, um, I think you deserve like that kind of recognition. Oh. Um, and and tell us tell us more about that. Like, you know, playing wow hardcore, something like that's so punishing. And and obviously oh I God. saw I saw the clips where you know like Asmo go reacted and whatnot, but yeah, and, and for people who ever checked that yeah. out, they should. Um, I think it's it's an entertaining piece, but t- yeah, how's that like playing something so punishing? Um, was it like a breath of fresh air for you? Yeah, walk us through that. It it was it was because um, well, I mean I I'll bring it up again. It's just I actually played a lot of WoW before Final Fantasy fourteen and before even uh, FF11, I was I was a WoW Andy for, for many years. I played from Burning Crusade, Burning Crusade through um, probably Legion, right. um, where it's like off and on. But I, I, raid, I was pretty sweaty raider Burning Crusade through probably Cataclysm or so, right. and just kind of sort of tail off after that. Um, <laughs> so like I had the whole classic experience mm. uh, in my back pocket, and doing the heart doing that hardcore like the way it was i'm like oh man this is this takes me back but then then i'm like oh i'll just play priest again because that's like my bread and butter and then i'm like oh wait priest around level 10 or 12 like we don't have nothing yeah. to really we have no survival tools until later on yeah. like nothing to get us out of danger so yeah, so i actually had t- i had two deaths early on because i just uh, it was like you get one extra enemy and you're like well I'll, yep. just, I'll just fall over dead now. And then the other one I think was avoidable. We shouldn't have been in that dungeon. We shouldn't have been in Zulfarak. Uh I thought maybe our 
the group, they were just uh, very confident that they could. Yeah. I'm like, well, I'm like, I've, I'm like, I've kind of healed while being under level. Like as a healer, I can be kind of under leveled yeah. if the group is good. Mm. But early on, there was just aggro problems. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, ooh, just the trash. I'm I like, see. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, maybe, maybe we shouldn't do this boss pull. But then we did, and then someone aggro. We didn't, we didn't fully clear the area so mm. like some extra ads came in yeah and then it just it was chaos and right. unfortunately i i stood my ground and i was like well i'm the healer i'm not gonna let anyone die and yeah i, I try to keep i and i actually i did a good job i got some clutch heals off but yeah. but if you know as a priest if you're the last one out yeah you you have no sprint you got nothing yeah. and since I did, couldn't use any more potions or anything. I was I was kind of screwed, so yeah, I just died. So. Yeah, but I did have a very epic comeback uh, to make it to sixty. Oh, I saw that in time in time for for the molten core raid. Yeah. I I did a lot of gaming. It was up until then, up until like the uh, hardcore guild. Like I wasn't really putting in big hours or long hours, but. During that time, I was yeah. definitely doing 10, you were going 12 hard. hour yeah, streams. I saw again. your streams, dude. I, I, I open Twitch every day. I see you streaming. I was like, oh my God, this guy is I'm going like, hard. I'm like, I got a level. I got it. It's like, I got to do this. I got, I got, we have, we have a quota. We have a level quota to meet. Uh, I, I got to get in there. And I, I made it though. I made the cut. Right. And good thing. Good thing too. And, um, you know, <laughs> that experience, um, you know, playing WoW and whatnot. Um, how 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 does it factor into your future plans? Because obviously you started doing variety, and, and we talked about FF seven a little. Um, um, yeah, what how, how are you thinking about the future? Well, I mean, I'm interested in the war within. I I do like the idea of having like a series, like a cohesive story. I think maybe WoW has struggled with that with mm. their different expansions. Like maybe they tell a good story within one expansion, but it, it's kind of not really connected to the others more or less i'm not probably angering some some lore no, animes right now no, but i think everyone but, agrees shadowlands <laughs> was utter garbage in terms of lore <laughs> okay okay but but if you have multiple expansions lined up to kind of follow the same story maybe that, mm. that could be really a really cool experience and uh, i i having attended blizzcon i was i was actually pretty excited for a lot of the quality of life improvements they're going to be uh Going to be adding yeah. to the game, so I would, I would definitely want to check that out. And for a while, for a while, I was uh, I was enjoying uh, Season of Discovery too. Mm. Uh, it's kind of I had to put it on the back burner because Final Fantasy VII came out. Yeah. So I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Phase Two, yep. Sod. <laughs> <laughs> I did I did have a guild though, and we were we were running raids and stuff uh, weekly, and it was it was cool. Right. I, and uh, I'm interested to see more of Sod too. Yeah. So yeah, I, I I would like to explore that. Yeah, fair and enough. I, and yeah, the whole like uh, Asmin thing that was that was wild when he mm. got to, when he reacted because he actually knew my name. He has a he has a really good memory, by the way. Like <laughs> he recalled like I came from like I hung out in his chat. And yeah. He's like, oh, that's Llama. I'm like, like, how does he know me? And I remember one time. I'll actually I'll never forget this, but. I was just hanging out in his in his chat. It was sometime after uh, you know, I had my stroke, and he saw me in chat, and I was just like, "Oh, hey, man, how you doing?" And he was like, "Oh, hey, Lama, what's up?" And he he knew that my situation. He, he was just oh, like, asking shit. how I was, wow, and he's like, "He's like, how you doing, man? Like, I, I read about that. It really sucks." And I was like, "Oh, man." And it's like, "Well, geez, thanks, thanks for even noticing that. I'm doing I'm doing better. Like, I'm out of the hospital. It's fine." And he's like, "Oh, that's a relief, man. I'm glad to hear it." And I, I thought that was really kind that's of that's amazing. That's a cool yeah. story. It um, is. But I feel like a part of that is also the way you are. Like, you're just genuine, honestly. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think as a content creator, sometimes you also you know you come you come across a lot of people as a content creator. There are people who. Um, you know, they, they kind of want to get close to you because like they have an agenda, but mm -hmm. you know, honestly from day one, like I could feel like you genuinely hung out in people's chat because you just want to know people and that's yeah. what's so special about you, honestly. And I think people respond to that. And in his case, he did. Yeah, that's, it's, it's hard. It's hard to like, uh, not kind of give that impression to some streamers. It's like, well, why are they here? Do they want something? Like, am I just a stepping stone? Or they want to use my platform? They want to use my clout? And I, I totally get that. But like, if 
if you see me in your channel, it's like, it's probably because I just enjoy your content. I just want to just hang out and, and vibe. And and most of the time, I, I, I well, I really don't want the shout out. Like, please don't shout me out. I'm just, I'm just here, <laughs> man. Like, I'm just, please, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Like, don't, don't do that. Like, I'm, I'm just, I'm just a viewer, man. Um, but if you want to raid, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> nah, um, not so much lately, but, um, but yeah, I, I value making mm. friendships and genuine like connections, like you're saying, uh, with other streamers. Um, and that way it feels less like, oh, well, they just want to collab because of viewership or whatever. It's like, no, I just want to play video games with someone. Like I, like I enjoy the, spending time with them and gaming yeah. together. And I think that's the that's one of the things I noticed about the 14 community as well. Um, you know, Arthur and I had this debate, which is, uh, I think 14, I, and I think we both agreed that 14 is the best directory to start as a streamer. Because mm -hmm. oh, sure. I think there's, a, there's almost an element of people being accepting of you trying new things. Like they also get that, you know, as a streamer in 14, there's only so much you can do on stream every day other than checking people's adventurous plates. There's only so many <laughs> plates you can see, you know, a big content out of. Um, so there's almost like a acceptance that, you know, you will eventually branch off and, and do variety. Like you said, Final Fantasy VII, good example. Lots of mm -hmm. creators are playing that right now. Um, yeah. Yeah. How, how did, you, you know, how was it like for your community? Like, did they support your move? And yeah, if you can talk more about that. Um, I, I'd say I have a, a pretty good core community that has stuck around. Um, but there are those, and I, I, I know I, I had a tweet cause just kind of lamenting this, but I was like, oh, there was a, definitely a lot of people that, um, stopped watching and just stopped coming to the stream. And while, I mean, that's sad and I expected it, it just still kind of, kind of hurt. I'm like, damn, like, all right, well, I guess they just really love final fantasy 14 and not so much like hanging out and stuff, but like, I get it. Like that's, that's their right. That's what mm -hmm. they want to do. And that's the kind of content they want to watch. So, I mean, that's, there are games that I probably wouldn't care to watch. I'm like, Oh, but mm. I also, um, try my best to support my friends that are yeah. streaming other games, especially when I know that they've only done really one game. If I see them playing something else, like I'm in there, I'm like, Hey man, like, yeah, let's oh, you want to do Elden ring now. Let's, yeah, let's yeah. go. Let's, and I, I try to ask about that and stuff, but it's, it's, that's definitely been a challenge. Yeah. Um, numbers wise, but I, I think I've held my own. Yeah. And um, this is something that yeah. I, I have a lot of thoughts about this because, uh, as someone who used to only do wild content and then having to kind of swap really because, well, the game is not doing well. Number one, but the two are just miserable playing the game. Mm. It would, it is scary. And, but the thing about well, being, especially for for you know, if you, if all your eggs is in one basket in a game, right? You like imagine that's your source of income of feeding the family, and your right. future and livelihood scary. is tied. Yeah, it's, it's tied to the health of a game, which is all it takes is maybe the company in in Blizzard's if, case or Shadowlands. The games, just, yeah, exactly. What if we what if we have a Shadowlands? Like what if like what if Don? I mean, I hope Don feels good, but like likewise. It, but, but it might it might have a, a weak opening just because it's going to be a new story a new, yeah, and we've exactly. wrapped we've wrapped up Shadowbringers and Endwalker. And it's like, well, is it gonna be as strong? It's gonna be kind of like I mean, people like a Rum Reborn, but it's but people don't say, Oh, Rum Reborn was my favorite. They say Shadowbringers is my favorite. Yeah. They say Heaven Sword is my favorite. So yeah, what does this mean for Don Trail? Like it's gonna be story building, it's gonna be character building. Uh, and so I don't know how, yeah, I'm, I don't know how that's going to play out. So I'm, I'm glad that I'm at least getting my community used to yeah. variety. And I want to continue that even when there's new content for 14, like I want to hit the content for 14, but then I want to go back and make time for the new games that come out that look interesting to me that I want to play that I never gave myself time to play because yeah. I was in an MMORPG. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and I, I do think that this approach of doing more things is is more right. sustainable to go, honestly. Mm, there There is. I, I probably, uh, if, if someone is trying to branch out into variety, um, I would also look at what you play because mm. you, if you, if you want to alienate a lot of your <laughs> core audience, it's changing, not only just changing games, but the type of game yeah, you genre. play. So if you're the genre, if you go from MMO high fantasy 
to high tech first person shooter yeah. or strategy game or something that doesn't really fit the mold. Um, it's you're definitely going to lose way more people than you would if you went from Final Fantasy MMO to maybe uh, like an Elden Ring yeah. or a Monster Hunter because there's there's some overlap between those games or even like the game maker or like like mm. going from Final Fantasy 14 to remake and rebirth that, that makes a lot of sense cuz people love Final Fantasy and they they'll have like crossovers and stuff and they'll have bosses from the different Final Fantasies in 14 so you don't you don't lose too many people there right but definitely when you change when you the farther away you get from your first game or your only game, the, the more people you lose. So just, just think about the games that you're going to try out. <laughs> yeah. And, and I said that I think it's a more sustainable way to grow. Um, and yes, you do take a hit in the short run, but um, I think the, the, the audience that you grow going forward, mm -hmm. um, they're here for you. I think they're here for, for Lama, like the person. And yes. Of, yeah. And I, I, I really enjoy that. And I'm, <sighs> I'm going through a lot of changes, man. It's it's crazy. So I I have never had a big YouTube at all. So <laughs> I'm I'm going from a one game uh, Twitch only streamer to now a variety on Twitch to making a lot more YouTube content. I mean, for me, it's I'm making I'm doing a like I've I've been doing my own editing, so I've been doing amazing practicing with shorts, and I've had some. Some pretty good. I mean, for me, I feel like I've had some pretty good success with, with in terms of views on the shorts that I've had. Like I had one of them for FF Seven that had almost ten thousand views, and That's like cool. for me, with only I only have a thousand subscribers, I'm like, oh shoot, I have more views yeah, than, exactly. than subscribers. So I'm like making yeah. waves. Yeah, and and now I'm trying to do some some long form videos, and I had to tell my community and even my wife, I'm like, mm -hmm. this is probably gonna suck for a while, but. Yeah. I have to take nights off of streaming and work on YouTube. You're really I need to investing grow as a for YouTube. the future. Yeah. I'm investing for the future. And my dream is if I could be monetized on YouTube mm. and make the bulk of my money there, Twitch would be secondary. Yep. Then and yeah. I, I hope this, I hope then I wouldn't have to feel the pressure and the stress of, Turning oh on God, the camera, am gonna, right? Am yeah. I am I am I gonna make enough subs or bits tonight? Am I gonna should I stream longer if I got if I get a big raid? Like, I just want to make good content mm. for for Twitch. Yeah, and then then I could take I could take all that content and then make more content on YouTube. hundred percent. And, and then I'll be in a better disposition. Yeah, because I'm not gonna be stressed. So I and I'm kind of. Not not faking it, but I'm being very mindful of that while doing Twitch content. I'm like, well, let's not stress about the numbers now mm. and just have fun with it. Because if if I'm worrying and yeah, anxious on stream, I'm gonna have a harder time making good content about that on yeah. YouTube. <laughs> so it, let's just it let's definitely go have shows. Fun. Um, and and I don't know if you've seen this video from from Ludwig. He's one of the biggest you know YouTube, YouTube creators and whatnot. I, I think I know which one you're talking yeah, about. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And he talked about how um, you know you should kind of double dip, right? Your stream going into YouTube. And I think you are you're onto something right here. And I've also seen you know more, your YouTube content like popping out my feed. And I think there's something right. That's about good. The, yeah, like I've seen because I've oh, seen your yeah. thumbnails. Oh, if it's evolve, coming in dude. your feed. Yeah, yeah, I've seen your <laughs> thumbnails evolve. Like oh, you know, you have more of the reaction faces, and like that's great because that's a good sign. And um. All, all I'll say is that I think investing in the future makes absolute sense right now, given that it's like kind of a loud before dawn well, trail, right? Because the moment that thing starts, you'll be busy on stream, but now it's the perfect Oh, for time. sure. Yeah. I And I would like to be able to make guides, um, like party finder guides, yeah. not so much week one guides, but- Oh, dude, I think I people like would love that, really. I, maybe, f maybe four weeks after like the tier comes out and we've settled on a party finder strat, I'm like, well, let's make a really good party finder guide for people to follow. Since, like, uh, I mean, I think I have a pretty good narration voice, and you do. If I if I have the nice visuals and stuff, then it would make sense. Like, well, let's do a llama guide, let's, and then then people in party finder can bitch about uh, <laughs> having doing a llama strat or something. I'm like, or not? It wouldn't be my strat necessarily, but they'd be like, oh, let's just oh, you're using the llama guide, and then or of course some people would be happy about it. I don't know, but yeah. either way, I, I would like to make some content and use all this time to just kind of 
practice and and get better at, at um editing so by I the time totally Delta rolls around that. i totally see that mm-hmm. working the the llama guy thing has legs because you've already made a name for yourself and like helping you know people transit into raiding that mm-hmm. to me is like the most natural thing and and here's, I think so and and one of the things that when i started doing um 14 content was i i kind of researched like okay who who's big on youtube and whatnot and the one of the crazy stats i came across is that miss tech she runs you know a YouTube channel around like, you know, educational content. Oh yeah. And, and dude, yeah. like there will be no uploads and she will get consistent views. And that yeah. that is basically in, in other words, like for you, that could be a way to alleviate like the financial stress because you could be sleeping and you're not streaming and you're going on holidays. And- absolutely. Absolutely. Cause that's that's the other thing about YouTube. It's like, well once you you put videos out there, I mean you'll still get yeah. views on them for months and months and months. And sometimes like they'll they'll dig up something something old and be like, oh, hey, I watched this and like, you're in it. I'm like, oh, because I'll, I'll get people coming to my stream that watched someone else's video mm. and I was in it or they, they said something like, oh, if you want to uh, learn how to raid, you talk to Llama, right? And I still get people like that. I'm like, well, shoot, what if I had my own stuff? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I think, I think the people that do the best in Final Fantasy Directory have a big YouTube presence where they where they can have that extra freedom of playing other games that they want without feeling like they have to play Final Fantasy 14 all the time. But if they hey, if they do, then that's that's fine. They can do whatever they want. Yeah. And, but it's, and you know, it's I so think important. You you look at someone like Xenos and Arthur, it's like you look at the YouTube oh, sure. channels, it's pretty much personality driven these days. Oh um, yeah. Like, Arthur's had a thumbnail and it's like the tree incident or some, or is it these ones? I can't remember. But anyway, like it could be a totally irrelevant thing to 14 and you know, it's you get views. And I, I think you're onto something here about investing for YouTube in the future, you know? They, they, yeah, they, and I've, I've met those guys and I, they're, they're fantastic, man. Like I, Arthur's is a bro. I got to hang out with him a couple of times at FanFest. I, I wish, I wish he lived closer, man. Cause I, we, yeah, we'd hang out a lot more and, and Zeno too, man. Like we, Meeting them in in person and then just being able to hang out like away from the crowds uh, it was very special to me. Um, especially in um, London, where just we were all at the same hotel, um, just doing everything together. And and yeah, I've I've learned a lot from them. I I haven't really been a, a React Andy so much, but I've <laughs> I've been testing that. Of course, my last video, which was a reaction, um, I actually planned for a stream to do a reaction to something. Yeah. And then, and then in my mind, I'm like, well, let's just make sure I say things. So mm. it's easy for me to edit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're on, you're onto that now. And yeah, I, I think, and it, it helped out so much. <laughs> I think like the, the thing, okay. So when I first started like doing react content and, and usually it's like the trailers and whatnot, I also felt like this is a bit strange because I feel like the effort to reward ratio doesn't make, like it, it's, it's too good to be true for React content. Mm-hmm. But then I've also come to also learn and understand that 14 as a community, the people who watch content in the 14 directory, they crave reaction content, honestly. Oh, sure. And maybe in part of that is also, you know, the game doesn't have a lot of things going on. <laughs> you know, like- Well, downtime, content. yeah, downtime right now, They there's definitely like a need for like drama posts and or just reaction or- it might even not be game related. It just could be like other stuff we're reacting to. But if there's if there's drama and stuff happening in the game, then yeah, we're we're gonna pounce on that. Whether yeah. it's like a a Twitter post or there's some something was said in a party finder or, I mean, the, the latest thing with like with Zeno, who's like <laughs> talking about this one guy, in the community <laughs> one guy, yeah, for yeah. the for like yeah for the past couple of weeks. I'm like, damn, he's getting a lot of mileage. Out yeah, of that. Well, but, I think like four but, videos. Oh yeah, I watched yeah, all four of them, videos. By the way, I'm, like, it's, I'm like, it's, I'm like, I'm like. I'm like, another video? Like, what's going on here? But I watch it. I'm like, oh, oh. It's self-sustaining, okay. man. Like, Yeah. <laughs> like, I can't believe it. So. And and yeah, so I feel like I actually felt that, you know, initially when I did reaction, I was like, I was very puzzled by uh, why mm-hmm. does this thing work? And I eventually realized that, yeah, 14 as a community, they're vocal. They like to hear opinions. And it's, they do? if that's what the people want, you know, give it to them. And I, I would... You know, I would totally kind of tune into like, and and it's crazy because I've been on the road a fair bit. I've been traveling a bit. And one of the things that I always download is like just random creators reactions. Like Arthur's will be ranting about some totally random shit. 
and it would be it's entertaining. Like, a, like, yeah, it's like a it's like a podcast style almost. Like, but like they're just they're just kind of spitballing themselves. Like they're just like a basically a radio show you're listening right. to. And and I've I've done that like taking road trips or I just listen to like oh this thing's gonna be three hours great I'll just have that on and I'll just listen while I drive. And I've I've done that plenty of times. And <laughs> and I in the past I've never really given myself time to react because i was like i've always devoted okay help people with clears and that's all i did which is all right next group next group next person next yep. group next person and so it felt really foreign to me to even pause to react it felt unnatural but but now that mm. i've pumped the brakes and done more variety where i kind of have time to breathe and just think for myself i'm like oh you know what yeah, let's let's watch a video. Let's watch a trailer. Let's watch this and talk about it. And I'm, 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 trust me, I'm working on the YouTube, but but I do have now two reactions. I had the the trailer, the Don Trail trailer reaction, and then just this one yesterday. So it's I would like to do more of those. And I, it's it's interesting because like people definitely responded to the like the Final Fantasy uh, Don Trail trailer. They wanted to see what I had to say. Yeah, I was surprised. Sure. I'm like I'm like I'm like no one's going to watch this. Dude, you are the like, bigger one, the biggest creators. Like, what do you mean nobody wants to hear well, your, your take? Well, I didn't think that they <laughs> they would cuz I'm like I don't do react stuff, man. Like they don't want I'm like they're not going to want to watch this, but they they actually do. I'm like you're no, short changing okay. yourself, dude. Like honestly, I I would love to get your thoughts on the trailer like like especially on day one, when everyone's mm -hmm. hyped and talking about it, dude. Oh yeah. If you had a video, I will click on it so fast, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and I and I'm just really happy that you're, you're kind of trying that now because I feel like I, yeah, you have, I you've unlocked earlier, another man. level I, as a content creator. You know. Wish I had done this so much. I knew I had to do YouTube. I just, <sighs> I think it was a combination of like things were going so well on Twitch Fair enough. that I felt like I didn't need to, and they were. Because final again, Final Fantasy was like super popular, and like financially, it was like insane. Yeah, because of the numbers were like pumped up, like super crazy during that time. I'm like, like, well, hell, I mean, this is fine. I don't need the YouTube if this keeps up. But now it's just kind of, I feel like it's kind of leveled off a bit more. Mm. Um, if like even if I had stuck around playing 14, like maybe it it wouldn't be as challenging. But it, I think it's it's definitely dropped off since like the whole COVID restrictions, oh, sure. like the country is like kind of open up and people, I mean, even Twitch has published their yeah. numbers saying, well, it's down year to year. Here's yeah. everything. It's kind of this downward trend since like 2020, 2021, it's like kind of dropping off. And so people aren't tuning in as much as so you have, you don't have as many viewers um, coming like overall on the yeah. site. So you, you do as a content creator, you have to work a lot harder. And I've, Unfortunately, I've seen some people just they've had to either quit or take up other jobs. And it's because we I think we had a, a ton of folks during that time. They were like, like, I mean, I'm guilty of it, too. It's mm -hmm. like, well, shoot, content creation. It seems like a, a good thing to try during right. COVID. <laughs> hey, it worked out for so, you, man. So <laughs> but I know. But in hindsight, I, I wish I would have given myself time to to work on uh, mm -hmm. YouTube. That's and any any new streamer, please just. Get that under your belt. Learn those skills. Yeah, fair Make enough. Make some content. And mm -hmm. and I th I think um, it's it's interesting that you say that because uh, it was a crazy time in, in the 14 direction. It really was. And mm. I think I was a you know I was a beneficiary of that as well, like switching g games into 14. Um, yeah. But but you also learned like like on on hindsight and I, you know Arthur's gave me this warning. I remember like we had dinner when I first started playing 14, and he said. Hey, dude, like, I'm just telling you, the moment you finish MSQs, dude, like, things are going to plummet and you need to figure out, like, what to do. And oh, I, gosh. Yeah, I, that's... And I didn't, I didn't listen to him. I, that is... So many of, like, the the uh, the WoW creators that came over and were just, like, maybe not, they're not from WoW necessarily, but a lot of them that came over during Shadowbringers and Endwalker, um, and they did MSQ, that I've gotten to know... They've, they've all said the same thing uh, to me and you're either just on stream or on Twitter or whatever. But when they finish a certain part of the MSQ or like the main, like the ending of an expansion or something, yep. or especially if it was, whether it was Shadowbringers at the time or in Walker at the time, the yep. viewers, they, they go somewhere else and they're, and maybe they got their initial success mm. from all the people watching them do MSQ and for the reactions 
and some of them even got partnered because of that. But yep. then now it's like, oh, well, what do I do? What do I do after MSQ? Like, I, what do you become? You have like a couple different routes. Like, are you going to become a raider? Yep. Are you going to do reaction? Are you going to be like this casual, like kind of do everything? And, and it's, it's hard. Um, Cause if you, if you based everything on just your reactions to MSQ, it's like, yep. well, I, I hope you set yourself up for some sort of like other community within 14. Cause like you're going to need it. And uh, it's, it's, it's sad, but you really have no control over the viewers and, I've been guilty of that too. I'm like, Oh, they're at this part. I want to tune in. Right. But I, I would also, I, I mean, I don't want to like toot my own horn, but I, I think that I might've helped a few of those streamers that did finish MSQ by getting them into raiding, right? Savage. Yeah. I'm like, well, Hey, now that you've finished, why don't you come raid with me? It'll be easier. Cause I'll teach you. And then it'll, your community will like that. Cause it's yeah. like, Oh, I want to see. I want to see if they can raid. Yeah, let's watch. Uh, I mean, so and and maybe that unlocks like some more content for them to do on their own time without me. It's like, well, I've done Savage. I can now. I can keep progging. That's so, that's cool. So yeah. so you mm -hmm. know, I think they not only benefited from like raiding advice from you, but I think like yeah, you know, having that streamer lens about what should you do after MSQ. Oh. That was that was valuable advice. And I, by the way, I learned the hard way because. Um, Obviously, I think by content kind of, like I was definitely struggling a bit with like, okay, after MSQs, what the hell do I do? And right. um, it took, it yeah, it took, it's strange because like it hits, it it takes you off guard because you, it does. you see your content doing well and you don't really think about, yeah, you don't think about like suddenly the You the don't, dip, you, 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 you don't hard. at all. And I think at the You're point- You're like, where did people go? It's It sucks, man. I, I, I feel for people. I'm like, damn. And it's, but you're going to get, you're going to get- those kinds of viewers, like there's, they're, they're kind of MSQ vultures. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Emotional. <laughs> nothing against them, man. Nothing against them. But they, like you said, you are, yeah. I, I do the we, same. We'd love to see the emotional parts of the game. They're like, well, I want to see how they can react. Yeah, pretty much. Gonna, um, yeah. And, and I think that's why starting in 14 directory is, is probably like one of the easiest directories to start in because MSQs is a huge draw. Mm -hmm. The challenge then is like, it's this, this easiness is balanced by the difficulty of finding what's next. And, and it's almost as though you have that window during the MSQs to kind of win over people of your personality or whatever extra, you know, X factor you have. And, and that's probably like the, the, the path forward. Um, but yeah, it's, it's great to hear like your thoughts there because you have been going at this like, you know, for a really long time. And I'm sure like what you've just shared <laughs> Honestly, in, th in this podcast, I think we'll go a very long way to helping people like kind of avoid some of the, the same mistakes that we made. Oh, for sure. Um, and, and whatnot. Mm, cool. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just before we wrap up, like kind of what's what's next for, for Lama? I think we talked a bit about this, like going for a variety sure, and whatnot. That's but okay. What's, you know, what's your what's your hopes for, you know, the next one year as a content creator, you know, yeah, on um, trail, all that. Right. Well, um, in the short term, I, I would like to finish up uh, Rebirth, which is gonna probably gonna take weeks. Um, I would like to try Dragon's Dogma too. That looks mm. that looks really cool. Right. Um, now, I like Power World. I actually have my own server, my community server, and there's gonna be some updates for that. I think I still think that's gonna be a very big game. I, we, yeah, I played it in an an, an alpha. Yeah. And yeah, that, was, that was early. That was just early access. That was alpha and early access. I'm like, damn, this could this could really mm -hmm. take off. And we had crazy popularity, and it was so much fun. And I would like to do some more of that. And hey, maybe even maybe even chuck some guides out for Power World and just test my chops in other games. And it's like, hey, well, here's how to here's how to start a, a base or how to capture certain enemies or how to do a raid and in power world or whatever and then of course um leading up to dawn trail um i have to finish the msq of in walker i haven't touched it in like six months now so i think saving all of that like mm. content leading up the dawn trail like i might start like a week before dawn trail where the timing makes I, sense. I, where i wrap up the story kind of like get used to everything i was like all right let's get some tie up some loose ends um and then do Don Trail stuff and then shoot. I think I, I think War Within is out. Yeah, that I time think it's too, August right? actually. My my guess is um, it comes after. It's Don gonna Trail. be close, so we're gonna have. It's I might July. have to juggle. Yeah, and then I think we July, don't know. Trail, my guess. That's my yeah, guess. Just, yeah, I th it, uh, yeah. It's gonna be yeah, pretty close to each other. Um, but when the raid tier drops, mm -hmm. I have to figure out 
what I'm going to do there because I'm not going to do week one anymore. That's right. that's out of the window. I I made a decision um, after my medical situation to not do week one. I, I just I can't commit yep. to the 16 hours. I can't. But but then I can still do the shout casting mm. um, with with Frosty and the gang if they still have me, uh, which I hope they do. They so I would love to do so. casting. <laughs> um, I love to do casting for WoW. Like, I know Echo does. They usually have me on board. And I've I've been so grateful um, meeting all the folks from Echo. Um, whenever they do Final Fantasy stuff, that was so cool meeting them. And I would love to do if they if they decide doing more uh, racing. I'll I'd love to cast for them some more. Um, and yeah, get into some maybe some WoW, some War Within as well, and um, and just yeah, try to pump out some content and. Oh, and then of course I have some friends that they they've already nabbed me for the next ultimate. They they asked me a couple awesome. like a month or a couple of weeks ago, or actually maybe I don't know, a couple of months ago. They're like like Lam, I want you in our on our raid team for the new ultimate. I'm like okay, so so I'm kind of figuring out what I have to do for the savage tier because I will need to get mm. best in slot right. before the ultimate. So I can't to be I can't be super casual with <laughs> right. it. I, I actually gonna have to try somewhat hard. Uh, to get the tier done and get geared up. So I'll I'll maybe I'll see if there's like some streamers or some raiders that nece- don't necessarily want to do week one or they're happy with like a week four or three or four or whatever it is. I don't know. Like if, if I clear by this between two and four weeks, that's still that's still very good. Um but yeah, I'm not doing week one. Like I I'm fine with like seeing what strats are out. Um but yeah, well I'll find a group, I'll do the ultimate and then probably scale back um, how much I play 14 and give myself time for WoW and then um, other games I want to try. Amazing. And, and, and of course, try to stick to a good schedule of producing YouTube content. I would, I would love to get, um, it, at least for now, one long-form video, like... Like every other week or maybe at least once a week if, if I'm being super ambitious and then several shorts throughout the week mm. and you with editing it just you gotta set you gotta set aside time for it and you'll get I've faster. gotten faster though yeah, exactly. I've gotten faster with that. my shorts yeah, yeah. you get yeah. way better it is and you, and you have work processors you know the flow and you just get oh with with my shorts I can I can crank out a short like within an hour it used to took me like five or six hours but now that I have like a little template Amazing. and I, I have my um, my libraries and presets I'm like okay all right let's get the captions and let's all right here's my sound library and like I I just start yeah all I have to do is just like make certain cuts yeah it's so much faster but but now it's like doing the longer videos I'm like oh okay this is oh god this is taking ages <laughs> I'm looking forward to your video though the, on what you expect of Don Trill. I think oh, that'll, that'll be an amazing watch. Yeah, yeah, it's it's different because with a short, it's like I'm just taken from a like a stream, and I yeah. have, I've, I have what I say. Here's the content, but now it's like, well, I have my voiceover, but now I have to have footage yeah, of different relevant, of yeah. difference that's relevant to that, and I can't just like have a stream like a full like it's got to make sense like it's got to match what I'm saying, and then. Yeah if it's not completely matching or if it's not doing a good job of communicating that, like I have to have graphics and like diagrams or whatever else. So I'm like, Ooh, I'm like, okay. It's, All right. It's a different ball game <laughs> for sure. Um, but mm-hmm. again, like I think you will get only better, you get faster at it. And um, you oh. know, it's, it's a nice segue because like um, how, how do people kind of follow you on, on YouTube? Like what's your handle? Is it, is it the same? Yeah. Like why don't you give a shout out for uh, yourself? It's actually, yeah, it's uh, on YouTube. It's actually Lama Todd TV. Someone had Lama Todd. So huh? Oh, I'm I surprised. Someone has uh, Lama Todd. Okay. Someone had Lama Todd. Yeah. It's like a old account. What a troll. Probably has, okay. I know. Well, no, it's whatever. But <laughs> okay. Yeah. There's a few instances where I had to use Lama Todd TV. I think like TikTok and uh, YouTube, I had to use Lama Todd TV, but elsewhere I'm just Lama Todd. Cool. And we'll definitely link all your socials in the description and the pinned oh, comments. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you. But any last shout outs here, Lama, like, you know, to your community, like any last shout outs here? Oh, well, I mean, a big one to to my boss, to my wife, uh, Mrs. Lama, who's uh, who's been super supportive. And she's actually started streaming um, as well. Oh, great. And she's she's actually doing the MSQ of Final ah, Fantasy that, There 14. we go. Yeah, that's so, a reason so to watch I'm, right there. <laughs> so I'm I'm able to uh, kind of guide her like, oh, hey, listen, let's let's start making clips and let's start making reactions. They're going to they're going <laughs> to love that. Like 
you know, first time reaction to, you know, the Praetorium or something. Like, like I don't want to see that. Like, a hundred percent. Oh yeah. man, she's getting mm-hmm. so much mileage out of your experience. <laughs> oh yeah, she is. And, and she's hilarious too. So I'm, I'm proud to see her have fun with and, it. And where, and, do, she's, and where do we follow her? Like, what's her handle? Uh, it's, uh, well, it's all shrimp and grits. <laughs> I will also post it in the, in the comments. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah. you. That'll, that'll make her so happy. But, um, but she's also been playing variety too like just i mean she'll take breaks and play other games but she'll she'll stick to final fantasy right. um, mainly um, Dude, but I she's not afraid to see, do like a things. husband wife collab channel in the future for you like it's such a unique <laughs> angle dude i i think there's some mix there you can <laughs> that's gonna that. be a challenge um with the final fantasy stuff because she's she's using my account so Fair i'm like enough. like honey i'm like <laughs> We're not gonna be able to read together unless like you re-level like one of us has to re-level on a different account. Yeah. Like, so. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. But um, um who knows, maybe we'll, we'll get her to play with some other folks or something. But I, I would yeah, maybe we'll play something together, I'm sure. Cool. In cool. the future. Um but yeah, but definitely to, to my community that has um stuck with me um for for my variety arc and uh and definitely for, for those that are eagerly awaiting me. Um, to come back to to Dawn Trail, I, I can't wait to see everyone there again too. And uh, there's there's, <laughs> it's okay, it's okay if you didn't didn't stop by or anything. Like it, please, I just we'll be there. We'll be raiding, doing some uh, some more coaching parties, and you name it, all back the to good the stuff. Old days, but yep. back to the old days, but keeping time for uh for mm-hmm. YouTube and variety though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want to have that balance. Mm-hmm. Great. Uh, look, thanks so much, Lama. I know it's, it's getting late for you. And I just want to say, you know, you're one of the nice, honestly, one of the nicest, most genuine people I've, I've spoke to in the community for 14. Oh, thanks, man. Um, and yeah, thanks for taking the time. I'm sure this will not be the first conversation we have on the podcast. Like I, down the line, I'm sure more. we'll speak again. And um, yeah, it's always great to just get your thoughts and, and whatnot. And, you know, it's been, it's been, it's been great. I'm sure everyone kind of agrees. Like you have some really great insights on, on where the oh, game is man. going and whatnot. Well, thank you, thank you, and I, 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 I'm glad that you had me here, and uh, it's it's always great um, catching your your content too, and uh, you're definitely an inspiration too. I I hope to get, you know, a hundred thousand subscribers on YouTube, and uh, so I, I look up to you and uh, with with what you do, and too it's kind. Too you know, kind. you're definitely a professional man. And so, we'll definitely uh, speak so offline because like I have so much ideas about how you can grow a YouTube channel. Like I I would love hey, to just um, kind of tell you okay. like yeah yeah for sure like. <laughs> yes. You you helped Please. me when I came to fourteen. I would love to return a favor, and we'll definitely speak offline because I've like lots of ideas about your your channel. And whatnot. Thank you, man. Um, thank you. And yeah, thank you so much. And we'll have you Thanks. back again. I'm very sure. All right. Thanks, I'm Lama. Looking forward to it. See thank you. you. All right, bye bye. All right. I hope you enjoyed the conversation with Lama Todd, one of the best fourteen coaches out there. Speaking about enjoyment, know that all our Patreon subscribers get to enjoy the ads free, unfiltered, unedited version of this podcast episode, and you can support this podcast via Patreon. Link is in the description. Speaking about Patreon subscribers, a big thank you to all the patrons that you see on screen here. Thank you for making this podcast possible. If you're looking for another 14 episode, make sure to check out the episode with Mr. Happy. We take a trip down memory lane. We discuss how Final Fantasy XIV evolved over the decades. See you in the episode. Subscribe if you'd like to see more content.